Well, hey guys, this is Joey and Ray with Senior Marketing Specialists, and this is A Human Connection. I have been extraordinarily blessed over my career to meet some really fascinating and successful people, and I get to now bring those conversations to you. So I hope that we can all learn and grow from each other. I hope you enjoy. I could not be more excited today to bring not only one very special guest to you, but we have a, a two for today. <clears throat> we have with us Christine and Jared Smiley of the Senior Health Insurance in Mexico, Missouri. And one of the things that we talk a lot about in our industry is, is how much of a family business this industry is. So I love when I can sit down with the actual families of the family business and we can talk through um, some of the nuances of what that means to be involved in a family business together. But uh, first of all, good morning and welcome Christine and Jared. Thank you for having us. Yeah, no, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So we'll, before we get into all the, the good stuff, uh, Christine, why don't we start with you of, of your background and, and how you got into this industry and, and then uh, then we'll hear from Jared as well. Kind of starting back, um, I went to college at Missouri State, which used to be called SMS, which yeah. I still love. I remember. <laughs> um, graduated with a degree in biology and for 10 years, I worked for the Missouri Lions Eye Research Foundation. They do cornea transplants and so when it wasn't normal, I worked from home right out of college. And my job was to travel around to the hospitals to do education about eye donation, talking to nurses mostly, but hospital staff and every hospital's dynamics and um, was different. And so it was interesting to me to figure out what worked here doesn't work here and meeting all the people and knowing that I was doing something amazing. Um, the last two years, I was the regional manager over all of Kansas and Kansas City, but we also had three little kids and decided that that's not what we wanted our life to be. And we both quit our jobs, moved back to Mexico, Missouri, and I stayed home for two days full time and then just worked part time while we raised our kids. So then when I was ready to go back, there's not as many opportunities in a small town. My husband sold insurance as long as we've been together. And one day he came home and said, this is what you should do. <laughs> he said, I know a little bit about it, but not a lot. And people come to me and ask questions and I just think it'd be, you'd be great at it. That's kind of how it started. That's and awesome. I was terrified, but it just, it was the perfect storm in my situation. So he wasn't in the senior side of the business. He was in a completely different side of insurance, correct? He does everything. Oh. Um, his agency, most, you know, he does group health. He did do a couple supplements, but he goes, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I had somebody help him, but, you know, does P and C for businesses and so. yeah, that was what nine nine years ago, Mom. Nine and nine and a half years ago. This like summer, half. it'll be ten years this summer that we did it. That's awesome. So, Jared, tell us a little bit about how you ended up in the family biz. Yep. So I graduated from Mizzou um, from 2012 to December of 2016. Um, and I got a job offer kind of through some of my friends in Kansas City and went and worked for American Century Investments um, right out of college and did that for right at about 11 and a half months. And I get a text message from mom going, hey, do you want to come back to Mexico? And, work with me? and I'm like, it was yes, during please. open enrollment where I was drowning. She, yeah, please, she, was freak, she was freaking out and goes, please come back and help me. And yeah. I didn't really like what I was doing doing there. I liked everybody I worked with, but didn't necessarily enjoy it living by myself. Um, I'm not a city person. I don't like living downtown. I don't <laughs> like buildings and concrete. Um, so I was happy to be like, yep, I'll put my two weeks in tomorrow if you want me to. So um, didn't know what I was getting into, but I did start while I was there, start studying for my insurance exam and all that fun stuff. And 
passed my test before I even moved home and had that done. And um, the rest is kind of history. Been This will be this my fifth year or fourth year, 2018. That's awesome. Time so flies. Fourth or fifth year. So, yeah. <clears throat> but um, yeah, happy to be back. Much rather be in a small town where I know everybody or they know me somehow and it's more personable. Um, yep. That's kind of the big thing that I like is that I'm a person and you're going to see me again and you're yep. not just going to get something from us and we'll disappear. So yeah. walk everybody through Christine. I think how you got started is is a cool story, too, as far as the location. Um, so talk a little bit about you chose the senior market. You chose to specialize there. Walk us through the, the, the pharmacy location and what that meant to you and what that meant to your clients. So I think that's very interesting. Well, when, so was, I didn't understand the timing, but my timing was perfect. I took my te insurance test in July. I did all my certifications in August, September, and then it's open enrollment. <laughs> and I go around to the local pharmacies and that I already know. And one of them was a big Lions Club member. So we knew each other before I was married because he was the pharmacist that owned that. And he was like, absolutely, come on in. And I mean, if I want to be perfectly honest, I tell the story that there were lines of people that first day waiting for me to help them. And like all these older people sitting in the chairs and standing. And I text my husband going, I can't do this. I don't know what I'm doing. And he brought me outside and is like, get yourself together. You know, like you're not going to mess anybody up. And there were a lot of times where I'm like, when people come in upset about a copay or something, and I pretend, could I change them today? And I can't say that there's been, but maybe one or two times where I look at it and I agree with what I did and that gave me confidence. But um, yeah, my being in the pharmacies right away really helped me because uh -huh. they gave me credibility and the pharmacy trusted me to be in there. So the people, and, and this is a small town. So half the people I was helping were Jared's old teachers or our old neighbor or people that I've known for a long time. But what a what a need you were filling. Again, you didn't even know. You, you mm -hmm. went there out of probably convenience uh, or an idea and, and look at the need. The first day they're lining up to talk to you. I'll go, although that's overwhelming, what, a, what an impact you were making. That had to feel very good that you chose a partner and I with. I asked. I didn't understand how busy I was. I didn't get it. You know, there's lulls in here too. And every time I would have a lull, I'm like, I'm not doing enough. I'm not, I'm failing. And I would go out and start talking to more people. And, and I don't know, I just didn't see what was happening, but it's like a giant snowball that yeah. all of a sudden it's like, wow, this is a lot. But yeah, it's working. Uh-oh, <laughs> now what do I do now, right? The dog that chased right. the car. Right. Yeah, so not the third open enrollment that I am just drowning and probably falling apart. Jared was saying he didn't love Kansas City and didn't love his job. And I'm like, you would be amazing. You'd be perfect with yeah. us. You were also in the hospital. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. AEP drove her to the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, there was that. So. <laughs> that was not good. I remember yeah. that. I remember that. It hasn't that. happened since. So. That's good. Well, I, I think we have you to to maybe help for that, right? Mm -hmm. I try. I try. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jared, what did that feel like when mom's opening up a new business, starting a new venture, and she wants you to to come in and, and be her right hand guy, right? To, to help yeah. run the business. What did that feel like? Yeah. So it was um, as a way of her being able to stay and take care of her book of business and her clients um, and, and doing what they needed her to do to constantly check on them. And she's not feeling like she's neglecting anybody okay. where I'm helping most of the newer clients, unless somebody of course asks for mom, always happy to, mm -hmm. yeah, that's fine with me. You're not going to hurt my feelings. So, um, taking on those new clients, um, and I knew, uh, and got to know the local pharmacy owners and they were okay with me being in there as well. So then I was, um, the one sitting in the pharmacies during open enrollment, 
Um, mom would still be up there meeting with her clients, but meeting with the majority of the new people. Um, and we still obviously have those um, connections with our local pharmacies now that we have our physical office. Um, and we still um, try to, at least not here in Mexico, but we do try to go to our pharmacy up in Paris um, and meet with our clients up there because it's convenient for them. But awesome. I have a great story. I just thought of, I had a couple, she was my client. Now her partner was turning 65 and he, I was trying to get him to have Jared help him. And he said, you know, I respect you, but I really want you to do it. And I said, okay, well, but we'll be there together. I couldn't get those two to stop talking. Like he loved Jared. They're talking hunting stuff there. I'm like, um, do you remember telling me that you <laughs> didn't want me to, him to do it? And now, so and that's, that's, I love that. I, love I mean, that. he had a, he had to earn his time and respect and, um, but he gets just as many people requesting him and referring him on to their friends now as I do. That's so. been as a, as the business owner and, and also as a mom that has to make you feel pretty proud, Christine. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> that's awesome. And like, like I said, this business is probably one of the greatest for being in a family business, whether that's agents like yourself within our company, within the carriers, it definitely seems to be uh, um, a passion and almost a calling for so many people that just resonates with becoming a family business. So talk a little bit now, Christine, about, so Jared's coming in to help save you from drowning, literally in the first few days, in the first few weeks. And then once you kind of get your head above water, how then do you, what did Jared bring to the business that maybe you were missing? Not just another person that, that clients could talk to you, but about the actual business, uh, building the business and working on the business. What were some of the insights that Jared was able to bring to that? You know, one of the first things that that he helped me with is that when I was like, I would make him sit across the table and pretend that he was my new client and go over Medicare. And he was blatantly honest with me and said, I don't even know what you're saying. Like these words don't even, I don't even know what these words mean, mom. You're talking in another language. Yeah. And it made me pause and yeah. think about the things that I know that I say that are new words and new terms yeah. and, and, it just, it helped me, like, nobody's going to say the things that to me, they're not going to tell me to shut up and what are you saying? <laughs> you said that, but, um, and then, well, that's awesome. We, we talk a lot about that in our office too, the, the acronym soup, you know, the mm -hmm. ACP, the MAPD, the SNP. And we just, we're, we're so accustomed to talking in that way that when you have a, a customer in front of you or an agent that's new to the Medicare just, space, careful of that. you've got to slow down, back up, mm -hmm. talk to them in their language and in their knowledge base. And yes, like Medicare is, you guys could, you know, recite it in your sleep, but mm -hmm. most people coming in, they're hearing all this for the first time, or even if I'm hearing it for the second or third or fourth or fifth, it's still not what I do all day. It's my insurance. That's it. It's my insurance. Yeah. That's what I need. I need to know you're going to be there. I need to know you're giving me the right plan and you're going to be there when I need it. And I hope to God I never need it. Right. Well, and Jared said that that's why people call us because they know that we're going to be here. It's not an 800 number where they're transferred to somebody different every time. That's, yeah. that's why people have us do it. Yeah. I love that. And yeah, uh, mom always says they're gonna they're gonna pay somebody sitting in a cubicle that you probably won't be able to get a hold of, or they'll call yeah. us, or you can or you can have us help you, and it doesn't cost you anything um, or any more to have us help you. So exactly. So and another important. huge thing that Jared helped me do. I mean, with COVID, it really pushed us to do everything online and the more technical thing. And I think that I'm okay with that but he just having him next to me made gave me more confidence of click on here and do this and it's not that hard and pull this up and you know <laughs> working from home by yourself is scary sometimes and um having another person to say is this right 
and you know, I think it, we've gotten to the point that I ask him as many questions as he asked me because some things you may have only come up once or twice a year. Yep. Yep. I, I joke I double as IT sometimes too, <laughs> whether I'm good at it or not, I'll try, but uh, fixing stuff, but mm -hmm. uh, kind of piggybacking off what mom was saying there. Um, Cause I was helping a majority of the new people. Uh, I'd say now it's more 50, 50 based on when they come in um, or if it's spouses, things like that, we try to keep those together, mm -hmm. but um, was like with applying for Medicare online. We used to just do paper applying for Medicare and fax it to Social Security. Oh. And I was doing all the Medicare applications on uh, Social Security's website. And she hadn't really done a lot of those. So kind of helping her with that, yeah. do that beginning part. And now it's like the back of our hand. We did one yesterday for somebody. Mm -hmm. And now we're trying to talk people over the phone <laughs> to do it. And that's hard. And so yeah. um, then doing it in the office, but just yeah. little things like that where I can pitch in and help or an outside opinion. Uh, but like mom said, is we like to bounce ideas off each other and make sure we're, we're right before we go through and do something just to feel more comfortable. So and I, I sound like a broken record on this part, but I just keep saying this again and again, when I started, people turned 65, they started social security, they started Medicare and it was easy. Now, half the people we talk to are working past 65 or they're coming in and they have part A and they need to add part B, but they worked at two employers since they turned 65 and they need all these forms and they 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 come in just so flustered and overwhelmed and, and it's messier and harder and it's not as easy anymore. Or they start part B and they go back to work. And then yeah. They, yeah. they want to start part B again. So and then they want to cancel it because they're going back to work and then they want to start it again. And I mean, there's just so many it's messier. To me, that's and I know you'll take this in the right way, but that's job security for all of us. I think as long as as Medicare itself and the the next generation that comes in is always dealing with something a little bit different and is always going to be a little bit different, each generation coming into the 65. To me, that's that's all the more reason that they need experts like you two that have the the knowledge, the expertise, that you live this day in, day out. It's not an 800 number. It's not a website. I remember when the ACA first came around and we looked at some of the websites and we were actually a little bit nervous because I thought, wow, that's really slick. And if they can make ACA this brand new thing that, you know, just born, if they can make it look that easy to to enroll to the average citizen, then the next step would just be Medicare. But thank goodness it didn't work. It didn't it fell apart. It was messy. There was way too many things that you needed an advisor for. But it does kind of stop and give you pause that every time there's a, a new twist or a new complication or a new, you know, who knows what all the the lasting effects of COVID will be, you know, on the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. Uh, to me, I always look at that as thank God there are people like you guys out there that that are going through this maze with people that um, that care enough to learn and keep up to date on all of those situations. So, and I think sometimes we take that for granted. You do. Know we were at the senior expo at the Y, and we didn't. We just gave stuff away and said hi to people. That's all we did. And had several people that come up and just say thank you to us Aww. and to Jared, and it was nice. And it was a lot of a lot of current clients and a lot of mm -hmm. people not quite to Medicare age. So doesn't that make it all worthwhile though? Too, I mean, some days you get kind of in the thick of things of doing the stuff and checking off the lists and filling out the forms that you kind of forget what you're doing, which is making a huge impact on people's lives and. You know, we always talk about the the health insurance side or, or the life insurance side, which others, you do these things to protect them for something you hope will never happen. But when it does, if it does, that you've made all the, help them make all the right choices. And that's, if you've ever been through that with somebody, it's all the difference in the world. When, the, when that day happens, that hospital stay or that death or whatever, <clears throat> excuse me, when that happens, to know that somebody like yourself put together the right 
package for me or my loved one is makes all the difference. Jared just is helping a lady right now and her husband was my client. They're lower income, put him in, but he had some serious health issues, put him in a supplement and drug plan. And I kind of forgot about it. Like I didn't hear from him or, well, I guess they moved down to Florida where their daughter is and went to the state of the art cancer center and he could get all these amazing cancer treatments and it didn't cost him a penny. And wow. she just like was forever grateful. <clears throat> and so now she's moving back and now she wants Jared to help her. So, oh, of course. Well, so you're, we'll with, you're with somebody. So she walked in, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll flip the question around Jared uh, that I asked Christine, which is what did you bring to the, the business? We'll flip that question around. What have you learned? From Christine, as far as running a business, learning Medicare, taking care of clients, you're a different generation. Everything's yeah. going to be easier to you from technology standpoint, but there's also probably some things that didn't come as easy to you as maybe it did Christine, whether that was maybe meeting with clients or doing yeah. a presentation for people. I think she was very, I um, said, just understanding with me and in knowing my personality that I'm not super outgoing and willing to sit down and talk with people and letting me tag along, um, maybe longer than I should have on meetings. <laughs> um, and just going with her and listening to her. And I don't know, just, I feel like I built a really good foundation to build off of. Um, so she put, she put that infrastructure in place for me to be successful on how she runs her business and just letting me, obviously it's mom. Um, we were working out of the house and it was easy to be there um, in the office either way too long during open enrollment or um, <laughs> just just learning because every every situation was different. Um, and then finally just jumping off the deep end and, and going in and then just knowing that I had her there to, to ask those questions, make sure I was doing the right thing. Um, and, and she knew I would, but just I always wanted to double, triple check to make sure I'm doing doing it right because I didn't want to put somebody into something. And then the worst thing is um, that I dealt with my old job was you get some angry client that somebody else didn't help the right way that's yelling at you for something you didn't do. And that's something that always was scary to me, but we don't ever have that now. So you'll have people that are upset. That's, we always are able to resolve it. So. I think you both said the same thing, but in different ways of it's just reassuring it, Christine, it's reassuring to you to have somebody like Jared there that has the expertise for things that you're not familiar with, whether it be technology or a new product or something. Uh, and Jared, your expertise or your comfort in knowing that Christine's expertise from, is this the right thing <clears throat> for this client? So, I mean, it's a, it's a perfect win-win, right? It's, it's perfect. I'm a person that asks a million questions and I have to say that I asked Rachel a million questions. I felt like I called her all the time because I couldn't just do it. I had to know why and yeah. I want to know all the details. And I feel like I finally like <laughs> don't call you all the, as much, but you were that for me. And I think even when I was helping Jared, he was asking me questions that I'm like, let's call. That's call Rachel. That's our answer to everything. Yeah, call, call, call Matt. Call, call <laughs> Matt. That's right. That's but right. I mean, I couldn't have done it without you all. And and there's just a lot to know. So I'm grateful uh -huh. to have you behind us. And yeah. I, I tell people that it's not just us. We have a whole team behind us of a broker above us. Well, I love hearing that because I think that is what we want to be to, to you all is kind of that silent back office, you know, mm -hmm lots and lots of people supporting your business every day that your clients will never meet. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. We love the fact that, that they can be there. Cause again, just like you're dealing with questions that your Medicare recipient doesn't deal with every day. You guys are dealing with stuff that, that we deal with every day. Cause they, they talk to so many different agents across the country. So uh, I love the, <coughs> excuse me, the, the camaraderie of knowing that you've always got somebody that's got your back. Yeah. And I mean, if I don't know, I'm like, even in the beginning, I would say, I think I know, but I just want to triple check and yeah, people well, respect that. They don't want you to guess. No, I think everybody would love to have that versus a guess and, and be wrong. Mm -hmm.
Well, let's talk about some of the fun things of running a family business. Um, I'm always so curious of of, fam- of actual family businesses of, of you know, at five o'clock, you guys each go to your own homes. Does it stop? Does it, when you get together on Sundays, is it still shop talk? Uh, <laughs> where does it start and, and stop? And, and how do you guys kind of keep each other in check for that? On our, in our cell phones, we have a group chat between me and Jared and my husband called um, board members. So we have <laughs> board meetings at five sometimes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Especially when we were, I said, when we were still at, um, or the office was in mom and dad's basement. Um, we would have, have happy hour and go outside when it was nice and sit and talk work and, um, okay. said grand planning of what, what's next, what can we do different? <laughs> um, we've kind of had to back off that of, Hey, let's leave work at work and let's while we're together just enjoy each other's company and just have fun and relax Mm -hmm. and and not worry about that because we have gotten so i don't want to say caught up because it's always good to be thinking about work it just yet it can consume too much of your life um, or or your time and and that's not good either so some personal Mm -hmm. balance i think is is what we're finding out now we need more of that personal balance so and it's and it's usually those other family members or loved ones that are around you that probably keep you in check too on enough shop talk, right? Yeah, our, we are twins. Joke. I mean, they don't say it as much now, but they said it wasn't fun to come home because yeah. somehow the conversation <laughs> would get insurance be, between the three of us. That's yeah. what we. It just happens. So we try. We're better about it now. Not just let it go. Right. 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 Well, your your happy hours and your your porch talk too reminds me of a phrase that we use a lot. There's working in your business and then there's working on your business. And I think in those beginning days, that's what those were, those porch talks or those five o'clock happy hours were when you could get away from the phones, get away from the customers and really look at what are we doing? What what worked? How do we do more of that? What didn't work is just as important to know. Uh, and how do we get around that from happening next time? So I, I commend mm-hmm. you guys. I mean, that's what you were doing. You were working on your business when you weren't just in the the thick of things. Because if you try yeah. to do that now in the middle of the day, you know, the phone's ringing and customer's coming in. You've got a, an email to reply to. It's hard to get that mm-hmm. working on your business mentality when you're in it. <clears throat> all day. So I, I commend you on that. Yeah, there's got to be a cutoff point and there comes a time when, you gotta, you gotta end that. But I commend you on doing those. Those are very important. Yeah, we. I guess in most of those conversations, were, I wouldn't say client specific, but just situations that came up yeah. that that we hadn't talked about because we were meeting with two different people yeah. at, at the same time. So just yeah. going, hey, this this happened today. Um, this yeah. happened today. So there, you know. I, I've heard there's a big event coming up here in about a month or so, maybe, Jerry? 59 days, I think. Um, <laughs> six, 60 days yesterday, but yeah, we've got, oh a, got a wedding wedding coming up. So. Oh, my gosh. That's Yay. so exciting. So what day is that? July 2nd, 4th of July. July weekend. So, oh, nice. So, Beautiful. So tell me we, about her. Is she from? So Michigan? Molly is from Montgomery City. Oh. Uh, um, Molly and I have known of... I. I feel like I say the same thing every time, but we've known of each other for a very long time, um, but we never really talked much or uh, didn't date at all um, until a couple years ago. Uh, but she is uh, good friends with my cousin, Will, and that's kind of how we got to know her. So um, she's a nurse, right? If I remember she, right. She is a nurse at the university in Columbia. Yeah. So she works uh, in the medical ICU. Yeah. So she, um, was very busy during COVID, as were we. Um, but uh, she still works night shift, and she lives here in Mexico with me and commutes to Columbia, um, oh, typically okay. three or four days a week. So nice. So this is the first family wedding, Christine, right? Yes, it is. I'm excited. I'm so I happy. Room. <laughs> yeah, she just had her first she had her first shower last weekend. So oh boy. I was a little nervous, but was she had a good time. So, oh, that's fun. Uh, so, what else? What do you guys like to do as a as a family? If you're not talking shop, what's your favorite thing to do? We ride side by sides <laughs> on the weekends with friends. There you go. 
That's our fun thing. <laughs> Have you ever talked to Kathy and Casey about that? I know they did. Yeah, yeah, our last machine, we bought it from that, her. Oh, you did? <laughs> I know. I think recently, we, we recently trip. upgraded again, but we got a four seater from Kathy. Oh, nice. So do you just go on your property or where do you go? Where all do you go? We have, we don't have land, but we have friends that have land and it's just fun to go drive around and get uh, dirty and get stuck in the mud and pull each other out and <laughs> break expensive things, break expensive things. Exactly. Yeah, trying, to, trying to go through something that nobody else has been through. And yep. Yep. It's so funny to hear that. That's one of our favorite things to do too. And uh, I grew up on a farm and I couldn't wait. All my friends lived in town. And I grew up on a farm, like an actual, you know, working farm where there were chores and animals and crops and everything else. And I couldn't wait to be where I could live in the city, go off to college and live in the city and be like all my friends and all of that. And so fast forward, moved to Columbia. We love it here. We raised our kids here. My kids would, when they were all little, they would go up to my parents' house who still lived on the farm. And it was like the greatest thing in the world to them. Like they didn't need to know about Disney World because they had my mom and dad's farm. So it was just so funny to have the perspective of, you know, you want what you don't have. So growing up in the farm, I like, couldn't wait till I could live in the city and then raise my kids in the city. And all they want to do is go play in the dirt and, yeah. and ride the four wheelers and feed the cows and have bonfires and hay rides. And, and to mm -hmm. me, that's still one of our, uh, funnest family memories is doing all that stuff. Yeah, I kind of can relate to that a little bit too, because um, dad's mm -hmm. dad or mom and dad, my grandma, grandpa, he had a couple cows and a couple hogs or something like that, but would always like to go out and go with grandpa to feed the cows yep. or uh, brush hog on the tractor or let's go put yep. fence in or do something with your hands and yep. be outside. So, yep. um, that's the greatest. That's cool. but, uh, but my guilty pleasure is playing golf. Ah, and it's a very right. time consuming hobby, unfortunately, but <laughs> and, hunting. and well, I don't get to hunt as much as I used to, yeah. but because uh, open enrollment is in prime hunting season. <laughs> so that's, that. open that's enrollment just gets so. in the way of all the good stuff, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a place around there that you like to go? Um, so I live right across the gravel from our public course here in Mexico, okay. um, but then I like to play any new course I can play and I try to go play. Yeah. So. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I've never, in all these years of being in this business, I've, I've never really learned the, the art of golf, but I've always said that I wish I did because that would be one of the funnest parts is everywhere you travel, you go to, you go to a different course, just mm -hmm. to experience you know, different cities, different, different types of golf courses and things like that. We've got friends that golf all the time and they love that. Every, anytime, anywhere they go, they find the local golf course and, and go yeah. golf there. It's just a pretty cool experience. Said so anywhere I can fly that I can bring my clubs, I try to. Uh, yeah. So yeah. whether or not there's going to be a golf chance, but just in case. So just in case you're ready, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I like that you took your clubs and flew to Arizona and stayed with my dad and stepmom and then another flight to Florida and stayed with my in-laws and golfed and then flew home. Yeah, three of them. When I first, my first vacation after being with mom, I bought three one-way tickets. I bought one from Columbia to Tucson, Tucson to Orlando to see the other grandparents and then Orlando back to Columbia. <laughs> so oh, nice. I got to play golf in Arizona and in Florida and then come back home and see uh -oh. grandparents. So. I bet that was a really special treat for them. Yeah, they they enjoyed it. I need to I need to take Molly on the same adventure too. So Oh, that'd be fun. That'd be a lot of fun. She hasn't been to Arizona yet. So Yeah. What part of Arizona are they in? Uh, Green Valley, Tucson area. Oh, okay. okay. South of Tucson. But our neighbor, Winter's just north of Tucson, and he and all his older retired people ride side by side. So we go ride with them. That's awesome. <laughs> what we I was at a conference last week, and the funniest comment was made. This girl who was just starting in the business, she was maybe mid to late 20s. And uh, somehow the subject of the villages came up, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. A very large um, um, place in Florida where it's a retirement community, but it's like, you know, 
like the love boat. I mean, there's just activities and, and all sorts of things that are happening all the time. And uh, she was, somebody was talking about all the different activities that these people are doing. And, and this one girl piped up and she's like, oh my gosh, she says, being, I can't wait to get to my 60s. She's like, it's, it, you get to do all these fun things and, and be a part of all these fun events and these fun clubs, but you have money. So it's like, it's like the fun things of your 20s, but when you're in your 60s, you have money. <laughs> It's like I never looked at it that way, but but actually, I uh, that's a good thing to look forward to, I guess. <laughs> yeah, enjoy enjoying your time and, and exactly. having money, you got the, money in your pocket to do do something with it. So. And you've got all the time, exactly. Time and money is what we're always chasing, right? We never have enough of either, and we put too much priority maybe on one or the other. And, and yes, yeah, so I'm I'm very hopeful that that's what being in the '60s uh, is going to look like. Um, well, awesome guys. Well, we're uh, I'm going to have to close out here, but I, I thank you guys. Um, I know everybody's learned a little bit about you guys and, and about your agency. And and uh, I can't thank you enough for joining us here today, but hope you guys had a great day. Yeah. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, All right. thank you, Joanne. Absolutely. Thanks so much, guys. I'll see you soon.